one and done, what I said very early, is a need for repetition, not we finish that one more, go on. I love the beauty of the opportunity to repeat and to say the same joke again and to laugh hysterically again, all over again, as I watch my twin great nephews growing up who've just turned five, they will tell each other jokes over and over again, fall down laughing, and then get up and start again. So my niece, who is a teacher, has been sending me videos of her twin boys. And I've just been learning with them since they were about 18 months old through the video she's been sharing. I've been watching them carefully. And repetition seems so part of what they get joy from, so part of what they get reassurance from. So that's that first idea that we shared. The second one is the possibility of taking things in isolation, which is necessary. We have to shine a magnifying glass, or in some cases, I like to think of it as a spotlight or a flashlight on something. And then we take it to context again, pull it out of context, return it to context to make it memorable. And so there's so many researchers I could quote or cite. I mentioned just a few today, but the ones who truly, truly know young children understand this need for both, for speaking and listening, for reading and writing, for drawing and learning, and keeping that flexible and interchangeable. And that to make it memorable, they have to participate. They aren't just recipients. They aren't these empty vessels we're filling. We all know that image, but they are learning together. As I watch these twin nephews now at five, I watched how they've participated, been partners in the learning, made it theirs, and then try to teach each other. I've even tried to see them help each other read a page together, sitting in one chair, squeezed together, and they're sharing the learning, and that's part of the joy. And then thirdly, everything we've talked about today has been about language. The role of that early oral language foundation, taking talk to reading and drawing and labeling and writing, and not always in that order. As I said, young children may often think they're writers by drawing a picture and making some scribbles, say, will you please mail this letter for me, before they think they're readers. And so giving them more opportunities to draw, label, and write, actually, and talk, reinforces the reading instruction. It's all these intersecting circles. So here are summary points to think about as we our quick hour comes to a close. And just repeating that faster is helping to fluency. And this is about the idea that fluency is developed with repetition. And then see the same sound in many places, in many different forms, adds the flexibility. So fluency, flexibility. And then I wanna add the third one, fun. So we're talking and I'm using three sounds, the fluency, the flexibility, and the fun, because to me, all of that comes together when we use language and get their enjoyment in learning. We're building the joy and giving them the opportunity. So thank you for the opportunity to share today. And I have a quote I like to always say that one and two may not be the right numbers for a webinar, but when one teaches to learn and your chat and your comments and your questions have helped me learn today. So thank you for both being a teacher and a learner today. Yes, Dr. Klein here is um, Dr. Klein's. If you want to follow her on Twitter, please go ahead and do that because um, there's more that um, you can learn from her as we continue. I agree with you. Yes, when uh, we all learn together, there were some great posts in the chat, great questions that came in as well. Um, really loved being here with all of you. So thank you so much, Dr. Klein. Um, we appreciate you spending the time with us to share those three strategies, these three strategies that can be incorporated into classrooms to support early literacy starting tomorrow. Um, your wealth of knowledge. And as promised, here is the handout for you all. I'm just going to post it in the chat for you all. Um, so this handout here, it goes over. It has those three strategies there. It has the links to all of those lessons. We really encourage you to take some time to look at those lessons and see how you can use them, look at those strategies um, and see how you can
can support them in your classroom. If you have any further questions, please go ahead and put those in the Q&A right now. Um, and we'll get to a couple of them. Uh, I think, Adria, one question that kind of came in, um, we had a few people bring this up. Do you have any other advice on how to support students right now who maybe have not recovered from the pandemic and just need a little extra support? So any, from, from your perspective, any feedback or support that you have? I'm thinking in terms of the one thing we don't consider, but it was in the list of the three, the opportunity to write and draw. For children who've had limited time in school or been in reduced schedule, probably the thing that we've seen the most is lack of time for self-expression. And therefore, it isn't only the gaps in the reading knowledge, it's also the gaps in the expression that allows that to deepen understanding. So even as tough as it is, finding a way around this beautiful globe of ours to write, to communicate, to draw is not playtime. Yeah. It's serious work time for the brain. And it is never only about reading. It's about all of these areas. It's about literacy learning. And literacy learning is complex. And if we reduce it too small, we won't see the catch up gains that we want from this time of limited opportunity. So all I want to suggest is the one thing kids didn't get to do when learning was put at a distance was truly write and express themselves. It's got to come back and technology is our friend for that kind of retelling, joke telling, writing about, labeling about. I didn't go there third because I just listed it as third in importance. I listed it because it's critical to round out a full literacy life. Fantastic. I feel like that that's great advice for us to, you know, we only have three minutes left. We um, got to most of the questions and other questions. We will make sure that we go ahead and get you an answer to those. So our goal for you is we would love for you to try one literacy lesson in your classroom in the next seven days. We would love to have you share with us how that lesson went. Um, you can use the social media hashtag Seesaw or Seesaw Lessons to share this with us. Um, or um, you can also tag Adria and them and she would love to see how you're using them in your classroom as well. We would love your feedback as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and post in the chat a link to gather the feedback. I'm just gonna grab that really very quickly. There we go, it's in there already, fantastic. Um, we, we appreciate your feedback so much. Uh, we would love to know what you thought of this session. So please take just a moment to give us feedback in that um, uh, link right there. And if you are interested in more information, I know there were a ton of questions also posted about Seesaw Lessons. Go ahead and check out that web.seesaw.me forward slash lessons page. And um, there's tons of information there. And there's also places that you can connect with one of us at Seesaw to ask more of your questions. We so appreciate all of you joining us today. We know that it's busy and it's hard to uh, spend an extra hour in your day learning, but we really appreciate it. We also hope that um, this time has been useful for you and you can go back to your classroom feeling like you have some new strategies to use to support early literacy in your class. And Dr. Klein, we just so appreciate you being here with us. So thank you so much and uh, we hope to continue learning with you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.